All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at what is called dominated strategies. So let's assume myself and Elliot, the two red dots, want to play hide and seek with Ben. And Ben's going to be the one uh, that seeks us. So Elliot and I go off and hide. And we can hide in one of three spots spot A, behind a truck somewhere, spot B, up a tree, another spot. And spot C, which is basically just out in the middle of uh, the courtyard. So those are our three strategies, A, B, or C. Um, Ben's strategies are where he goes to look first. So he can check A, check B, or he can check C. But in fact, when Ben checks A or when Ben checks B, he also checks C because he just turns around and if that's where we are, we're there. So C is actually a terrible place to hide. And if you've ever played hide and seek, you probably never just hide out in the middle of nowhere. Sorry, out in the open. So what we do in this game is we just get rid of C. Ben knows he never uh, has to check C because we will never hide in C. And so that strategy is dominated. Um, whereas hiding in A is the best strategy when, B, when Ben chooses to check B and vice versa, hiding in C is never better than anything else. So C is a dominated strategy. If we take a look at a buy matrix, and let's take a look at the last row. So the last row is actually dominated by the second row. So for the row player, so player one, the person who chooses which row we're in, um, this last strategy is always worse than this one because 30 is better than minus 10 and minus 5 is uh, worse than 5. So this strategy can simply be removed. It's dominated, which would leave us with this game. Now, sometimes it's nice because through iterated uh, removal of dominated strategies, you get to be able to predict rational behavior. In this particular instance, we can't because neither... Um, of player two, the column strategies are dominated and neither of the row strategies are dominated. 